An early morning thrilling descent of Windmill Hill into Yorl is a great way to wake yourself up uh, and then coming up through the town and heading uh, to the main road on the outskirts where you're joining the national road busy as always a lot of traffic on this one uh, to cross the bridge and enter Waterford uh, you can come off the national road pretty quickly though uh, and then you're coming up over this rural road where I was keeping pace with a tractor for quite a distance there was quite a decent hill coming up here uh, and then quite a decent descent back down where you cross the national road again uh, and then following some rural roads with some very impressive flowers here on either side and an increasingly threatening sky as I descend once more towards the coast. There is a little bit of the coast cycle I technically missed here I realised afterwards. I'm going to have to go back and fill that in uh, but uh, I was heading down towards the sea just short of Ireland more and specifically at Whiting Bay which is yet another spot that should be good for a dawn to dusk camp. Uh, then a quick trip into Ardmore itself up the hill and yet another round tower. This round tower is apparently 12th century. So we're at Ardmore with its high tower. Uh, I think oh yes I'm in I'm in uh, Waterford now, because I remember Cork saying they only had two, so maybe there's more of them here. Uh, <laughs> Ard, by the way, Ard in, in, in Irish is high, as in high in the air. <laughs> so whenever you're cycling and you see something that's got Ard in the title, you don't need to look at the elevation to know that there's going to be climbing involved. So this is kind of like the high point of the coast around here. But, as I'm always saying, if you don't do the climbs, you don't get the views. I thought I just rode my camera coming into the village. Hmm. Ardmore is in fact supposedly the oldest Christian settlement in Ireland, founded by a Saint Declan, who is supposed to have arrived in Ireland even before Saint Patrick did. Uh, and there is some evidence for this, in fact, in terms of ecclesiastical records going back to the 1100s, although you're actually talking about a date around somewhere around, around the 500s, I think, uh, in terms of St. Declan. It's definitely got one of the stranger early Christian relics, uh, this rock which supposedly floated over from Wales carrying Declan's bell when he forgot it. Until recently it was a fishing port, however, as with other places, the switch to much larger boats mean that there's not much fishing, if any at all, being done locally now. It's now tourism and that meant I got some good pancakes and coffee. Climbing the hills out of Ardmore was where my luck with the weather came to an end. Uh, I was in for an increasingly drizzly afternoon in what had been a very wet Irish summer. It was one of those days with quite high humidity and then very heavy rain showers which meant you put on your waterproofs for the rain showers and then sweated in them when they stopped until you got around to taking them off. Uh, anyway, I was following the cliffs around to Ring uh, which is a bit of a gale talk still and a little bit short of Dungarvan. Uh, the, port, the very small port of Helvick is there, a uh, site of Fenian gun running back in the 1860s. Uh, but anyway, stopped for a pint and then resumed on my short trip to Dungarvan, but first of all, dipping down to the coast to visit yet another tiny beach. This one has an amusing, you're not allowed to do anything at all sign, uh, with somebody uh, basically summarizing it as no enjoyment. Uh, then it's back onto what is quite the busy national road. I think this is the N25 again, uh, coming into Dungarvan. Uh, there is at least a fairly wide shoulder on it for most of the time, and then as you get to Dungarvan itself there's a cycleway uh, running alongside the road so it's not a super bit of cycling but it's not as bad as it could be. Uh, now Dungarvan itself is the termination point for the greenway uh, coming down from the city of Waterford uh, so in a moment we're going to be joining that. 
This is one of the longer greenways in the country and very successful in terms of tourism. Uh, there was an awful lot of people both walking it and cycling while I was doing it, again following an old rail line. There is a little bit of controversy around these in that uh, a lot of people would have liked to see those rail lines re reopening, though considered not to be economic, uh, but it's good to see them at least getting this sort of use. This is also another example of the rules of the Irish coast cycle, meaning I'm taking the hard way. The Greenway follows a fairly nice gradual slope to Waterford. Rail, rail lines generally have to do that. However, I'm coming off it to do the Copper Coast. And the Copper Coast is both spectacular and also has some of the most ridiculous hills you're going to encounter anywhere in Ireland. I'm taking a breather and hiding from the rain here uh, at the first bay along the coastline. Um, it gives you a good idea of what's to come, lots of kind of stonework, uh, steep ascents and descents on either side of it, and of course the river that has cut that descent in the first place. Uh, but from here it's back up some very rough roads up the hill and onto the main road running down the Copper Coast and my first stop which is Strad Valley Cove, uh, another location where you could probably wire camp. Uh, get a look at the sign here. <laughs> the Copper Coast is one of those tourist branding exercises that seems to have been somewhat forgotten about. It was based off the idea that historically this was where copper was mined. So there's lots of these geological information boards which are now kind of getting old along the coast um, and it's never seemed to have cottoned on. Strangely enough because the coastline is extremely spectacular and is well worth the trip. The one thing that does spoil the beauty a bit is the obnoxious signs the council have erected at every tiny little cove. Most of these there's no space to even do the forbidden activities. So tourism seems to have got stuck in the more traditional form of the mobile home and caravan parks that dot the coast uh, because of the beaches that are along here and all of these um, coves really feel quite underdeveloped in terms of the potential of what they could be. Not super wild camping wise as the high tides come in against the base of the cliffs. But at a pinch, unless it's a super high tide, there would be space. And even if it was super high, you could probably always put a tent up in the car parks. Anyway, that's day 39 of my Irish coast travel. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and please do give the channel a follow.